Mr. Sirwa for the RCDA. Good morning, Mr. Um, Yom Sirwa for the Russian Canadian Democratic Alliance. I'd like to ask the court reporter to pull CAN 3249, please. Uh, this is the Canada, stra Canada strategy for countering uh, hostile activities by state actors. Um, I believe you were presented with that document during your examination, is that right? Yes. Okay, I'd like to go to page five of that document, please. Uh, it's the section of the document that talks about Russia, spe Russia specifically. Um, can we scroll down a little bit, please? Thank you. Um, I'm just going to read the first sentence as context. Uh, it's, it reads, uh, for, for decades, the Russian Federation has employed hostile activity tactics against Canada and its allies, former Soviet states, the former communist countries of Central and Eastern Europe, as well as in the Middle East, Africa, and South, South America. Um, you were aware of this during your tenure as uh, Minister of Public Safety? Yes, I was briefed to this effect. And um, I'm wondering why is Russia targeting Canada uh, spe specifically um, among other countries? Why is Canada you're, targeting? You're asking me in the general? Uh, in, as you, during your tenure as Minister of Public Safety, how, how do you view Canada as a target? Um, well, it's consistent with uh, the paragraph that you see there, which is uh, that they have deployed hostile activities uh, in the form of disinformation campaigns, in the form of uh, cyber attacks, in the form of practicing transnational uh, repression. So those would be some of the concrete examples by which I was briefed that uh, Russia uh, was attempting to deploy foreign interference in Canada. And like those, those are observations, but I'm wondering more um, in terms of like the, the United States are obviously a bigger threat to Russia, and and we can see Russia as being more interested into former Soviet states, for instance, that, that are closer to their sphere of influence. But what what about Canada? Why why Canada specifically? Well, in in my opinion, um, Russia is looking for ways to undermine democracy to pursue its own objectives. Um, and these are not just phenomena which are occurring in Canada. Uh, the most egregious example of their aggression would be their illegal invasion into Ukraine. But the connection between that uh, that illegal invasion and the foreign interference in Canada is is quite clear in my opinion that to support its case to go into Ukraine it spread many falsehoods uh, through the form of disinformation campaigns uh, there were uh, foreign media proxies that were operating at one time to spread some of the lies around the quote denazification of Ukraine that kind of disinformation uh, can undermine our democracy if it's allowed to spread unchecked and so these were the type of threats and concerns that we were uh, briefed on vis-a-vis uh, -vis Russia and its activities, its hostile activities in Canada. And, and you mentioned that this can undermine our democracy. Why is that? Well, if, if people don't know what they can trust in terms of what is reliable information from the institutions that are there to serve us, whether it's in government or whether it's the press, then that trust can be broken. And if they are... are it, it, there, there can be fertile ground for manipulation, coercion, again, harassment and intimidation through the deployment of disinformation campaigns. Lack of trust, harassment and harassment against MPs or other members of the society? Against whom exactly? Well, I think those are all uh, possibilities. But again, we've gone over some of the, the, the types of examples that, uh, that I think are captured in that paragraph. Okay, thank you. And I'm... Like this document dates from September um, 2nd, 2020. Um, you, you, were, uh, uh, you were not Minister of Public Safety at that time, but I understand that um, Canada was a target not only in September 2020, not only during your tenure as, as Minister of Public Safety, but for a longer time than that. And for many years, yes. I, can we say for decades? That I think that's fair, yes. Okay, thank you. And. Um, and what changed in terms of Russia's intent um, when uh, Russia launched its full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022? Well, 
you know, you're asking for my opinion. I, I can't speak to the state of mind of uh, the Russian, uh, the Russian government uh, and, and the regime. But what I can tell you is that the invasion did coincide with disinformation campaigns and, you know, other threats to foreign interference. And that was something that um, I was alive to, the government was alive to. And that's a big part of the reason why we were so eager to move forward with the Hassa MC becoming Bill C-70. And I'm, again, quite uh, pleased to see that it is now law. Thank you. I'd like to go to page six now. It's just the page following this one. Um, so it, I think it, it echoes a little bit with what you've been saying. Um, I'm just going to read the paragraph for the record. Um, Russia engages in uh, hostile activity state actors um, across Canada's political system to influence uh, government decision making, sway public opinion, and undermine trust of specific elected officials. Um, so that that was obviously true in September 2020, and was true also during your tenure as Minister of Public Safety. Yes. And. There, there's strong evidence to show that these efforts were directed specifically against the prime minister, um, notably during the blackface situation in 2019, the Freedom Convoy in 2021, and even during the tenant media operation in 2023-2024. Um, do you, are you aware of these these events generally? that Russia was tied to, to disinformation campaigns during these various events? I may have missed it, but I don't see anything in your last question that is in this document. Oh, no, it's not in this document. It's in other evidence that we've seen during this commission. I'm wondering if you're aware of this or at all. I, I would be much more comfortable confining um, what I would say about Russia's hostile activities to the document that is here before us. I think it is fair and accurate and, and precise as to the type of examples of foreign interference that Russia has deployed in Canada. That's fair. Um, I, unfortunately, we don't have time to see the other documents. Um, but I'm wondering if you know the, the undermining trust of specific elected officials. Do, do you have any uh, names or parties or which kind of, who, who was targeted by Russia specifically? Again, uh, Your Honor, I, I would just repeat my last answer, and that is that I would be comfortable uh, with what is in the document before you as a fair and accurate representation of what I was briefed on in terms of Russia's foreign interference activities in Canada. That's fair. Thank you. We can, we can continue in, the, in this document then, um, just because of the time, the limited time we have. Um, we can go at page uh, 15, please. Um, I'm just going to read to you, uh, I think, the f yes, the first sentence of the first paragraph. Russia leverages numerous government and non-government entities to support its influence efforts. Uh, the second sentence is, in addition, to the highly capable intelligence services, Russia utilizes current and former senior political figures, diaspora and comp compatriot groups, cultural and economic entities, the media, and its diplomatic staff to carry out interference and espionage activities. Um, is it in Canada also? Well, certainly, we talked uh, previously about the use of foreign media uh, as a means of spreading disinformation, uh, and, and we talked uh, about transnational rep repression and diaspora, com uh, diaspora communities uh, being a potential target in Canada. And I think that some of those examples are consistent with generally the briefings that I would have received as Minister of Public Safety. As targets to Canada specifically, but not broader other yes. countries. Yes, okay. Um, I would now, I think there's only one last question that I can ask with the limited time um, is uh, last page, the last sentence of last page. And I don't, obviously this, this is redacted, uh, I, don't, I don't want you to lead you to uh, provide comments that are protected by national security confidentiality, obviously, but I'm, I'm interested about the co cooperation between China and Russia and the changing geopolitical landscape as a threat to national security in Canada. Um, so with that context in mind, that uh, China and Russia are known to cooperate with each other on issues of shared interest, um, I'm wondering if you can provide some comments on the changing geopolitical landscape and the implications for Canada's national security, especially since the Russian invasion of Ukraine. 
Well, certainly, I think you, the illegal invasion into Ukraine has been a complicating factor in our national security landscape, and we've talked a little bit about how it's coincided with foreign interference in Canada, specifically through disinformation campaigns and through um, cyber potential cyber attacks in Canada. But beyond that, I think that the document that you have before you is a, again, fair and accurate representation of the ever-evolving nature of that threat. And I take the point um, in the last sentence that China and Russia have been known to cooperate with each, each other on issues of shared interest. I wouldn't go beyond that. Okay. Thank you. Merci. Thank you.